Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a file management system called File Run. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So over the last couple of years, we've taken a look at a few different file management systems like Cfile or Nextcloud. And honestly, I wasn't really impressed with either of them. So when File Run showed up in my Discord here a while back, I wasn't keen on even taking a look at it. But this morning I thought I would, and uh, I've got some thoughts on it that I wanna share with you kind of as we go through the process of looking at File Run and the installation process and that sort of thing. So I think with all of that said, let's actually jump over to my desktop and take a look at an instance that I already have set up. So here we can see this is my desktop. And of course I've got my username and password set up are already in there. Uh, those will be given to you after you complete the setup process of File Run. Uh, we're gonna do this in Docker, of course, uh, but just know that you will be given those once you complete the setup process for your installation. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually click sign in right here. And it works like it just, it looks good. It, it It's just a super, super easy platform to use. And honestly, this is gonna sound weird, but one of the biggest things that, that really caught my attention about this uh, was something that may not even matter to a lot of people, but um, I do some 3D printing. I've got a 3D printer uh, right over here behind me and I print stuff with it periodically. In fact, uh, right here is a, uh, a 3D printed uh, file that I, I designed for uh, the Zima board uh, to hold a couple of hard drives and that sort of thing. And what I like about it is that uh, it actually supports viewing uh, STL files, 3D print files, uh, and, and that sort of thing. I just, it was just one of those things that caught me off guard, to be completely honest. Uh, and I was really, really stoked to see that. Uh, also, I love that you can save uh, different angles and views and whatever as PNGs so that you can say, hey, look at this angle or whatever you need to do. Um, of course, there's also, uh, you know, you can look at pictures. There, There's uh, me and Cloud. Uh, cloud is, Cloud's my buddy. Uh, you know, we've got uh, ISOs in here, we've got EXEs in here, we've got a video. I will say that I haven't had any luck so far uh, getting uh, MP4s to play, but that really is probably just something on my end. Um, and let me, let me actually turn down my volume and let's open that up. And Interesting. yeah, so it's, it played, but it didn't show me the video, which I thought was kind of weird, but I'm sure again, that was something on my end. Also, uh, something that I really love here is you can go to music and select by artist or album or random, oops, not collections, random. Um, you know, so I just click that and I can then, you know, just select an artist or I can select an album and it will just play and it puts a little music player uh, down here in the bottom of the screen. It just works really, really well. And I love that, uh, you know, adding files, uploading files, it really is super, super easy. Let me open up uh, my file uh, management here on my local system. Uh, let's, let's grab, oops, I think I double clicked that. Um, let's just drag that over there. Didn't really want it there. I really didn't want it there. Let's put it back. But my files, there we go. Let's just drag that up to there. And here we can see that it is uploading uh, with no issues. And that is like a four, almost a four gig file uploading with no issues. Now, of course, you will want to, if you make this publicly available using a reverse proxy or or, or a VPN or whatever, make sure that your, uh, your reverse proxy or your remote access uh, solution supports large file sizes if you ever plan on doing that. Uh, but just know that locally uploading a four gig file is not an issue. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. I'm gonna cancel that, don't really care about that file, but uh, overall it's, it's super easy to use. I love that you can, you know, right click and create a new folder uh, or right click and uh, upload a file or uh, upload a folder or, or there's lots of options here, just like you would expect in something like Google Drive, for instance. And I love everything about this. They're constantly working on it. However, this is, this is kind of where some of my nitpicky stuff comes in. Uh, everything up here looks great and I know issues here. However, if we go into the control panel, <clears throat> and <clears throat> we want uh, to, I don't know, manage authentication. Um, 
you have to have enterprise to manage that. Uh, if you want to turn the ability to sign up uh, on and off, you need enterprise for that. Uh, password policies, if you want uh, to make sure that password pol or your password policy is strict, you need enterprise for that. If you want to see how much storage each of your users is, is using, you need enterprise for that. Um, and here's the thing, right? Like, I understand needing to make money. I do. Like, I get it. You know, I, I pay for some of my self-hosted services just because I want to support the developers. However, um, don't put security behind a paywall. That's that's not cool. Like, I don't. If you wanted to, for instance, put branding behind a firewall, man, more power to you. But don't put security behind a firewall. That's just, I have issue with that. But uh, all of that said, uh, I like what they're doing here. I like the overall platform. I'm hoping that somebody at File Run will see this and maybe, maybe think about what I've got here as far as things like security should never be behind a firewall or behind, yeah, behind a paywall rather. That's, I don't like that. Uh, put, put branding behind a paywall. Put, um, put, you know, uh, some of this other stuff behind a paywall if that's what you need to do, but don't put security behind a paywall. And if you guys watching this agree, do me a favor, tweet at them, share this video with them, let them know that putting security behind a paywall isn't a great method of handling their platform. I just, I don't, I don't like it. So all of that said, those little things aside, I love the platform. I love how easy it is to set up. And with that said, let's actually take a look at how easy it is to set this up. So here we are, we're logged into my Portainer instance where I've got this installed. Uh, we are gonna take a look at this in Portainer. You could do this via command line or however you wanted to do that. But uh, for the sake of simplicity and, and ease of, of kind of looking at things, we are going to use Portainer for this. Uh, basically, we're using a version two Docker Compose or stack like uh, Portainer likes to call them. We've got a couple of services. The first one is a database. Uh, we're using Marie Database version 10.1. Uh, we've got a, a root password, a, a MySQL user, a MySQL password, a MySQL database. I change all of that. Uh, for security reasons, change all of that. Uh, I didn't because this is just demonstration, but uh, make sure that you change all of that. And whatever you change these values to, uh, with the exception of the root password, so the user, the password, the database, change all of that down here as well, just so that everything uh, can, can, so that both containers can talk to each other. Um, below that, as far as the database is concerned, we've got a volume here uh, as far as where we want the database to be stored. Um, you can put that basically wherever you want to store your database. This is just where I'm storing mine for the sake of this setup. Uh, below that, we've got our web interface. Uh, we've got our image, which is going to be file runs uh, default, uh, file run uh, image there. For our uh, environment, we've got a, a file run database host, which will be DB uh, right here. That was actually declared right there. Um, so we've got a database port of 3306. That is standard for, uh, for Maria databases, MySQL databases. 3306 is the default port for that. Um, you've got a database name, user, and password. Again, change these and make sure that they match up here as well. Um, your Apache user group ID, you can leave all of this stuff as is, unless you have deliberately changed this on your server for, for whatever reason. If you have, make sure to adjust those to your server settings. Um, below that, we've got it depends on the database and we're also linking the database. We're also putting this on port 8880 uh, for the external port. Uh, you can make this whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, that's just what I put mine on. And we've got a couple of volumes for uh, basically for the dashboard and then for the actual files themselves. You can map those again, wherever makes sense on your setup. And then once you've got that done, um, well, I'll, I'll show you. So pause one second and we'll come back with a new setup. Okay, so I've redeployed this with a new setup here. We're using port 8882 there instead. And let's actually take a look at our logs. Uh, it looks all, like all of that is good. So let's pop this open uh, in a new tab there. Okay, so it says, File Run installation. Welcome to File Run. This wizard will help you install the app in just a few clicks. They're not kidding. It's really just that easy. For more in-depth information, check our installation guide. We'll pop that open. I'll also have links to all of this in the description down below if you want to check that out. Um, and then by using File Run, you agree to its license agreement. We'll click Next. And hey, all of this looks good. Uh, Image Magic or Amagic, however you want to pronounce that, um, is uh, not enabled at the moment, it looks like, but uh, it can be if you want to. And then same thing with the display errors. This is perfectly fine for production. All of this looks good, so we're gonna click Next. So our MySQL uh, host name will be DB2. Uh, if we actually take a look at my, my stack here, I did name that DB2 for the host, so that's what we're gonna run with there. 
Uh, our port is good. Uh, again, I didn't change any of these, but you should. Um, if the database already exists, do nothing. Uh, my When I first did this, because I created the database in the Docker Compose stack, whatever, I thought use existing data. Don't do that. Just leave, or just leave this as do nothing and click next. So now this is gonna take a couple of minutes to set up the database and do what it needs to do. When that's done, we'll go ahead and move on to the next steps. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later and right here it says file run has installed successfully. The default user account was created. Your username is super user and your password is this. This is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, this will be supplied to you. Make sure that you actually copy this information uh, just so you don't have to try to deal with it later. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. I'm gonna paste in my password and click sign in. And there we go. Now we're all set up and ready to go. That's really how easy it is to get file run up and running. There is a lot of stuff that I really like about this and really only a couple of things that I don't like about this. Again, a lot of that stuff being locked behind a paywall when it really shouldn't be for security reasons. Uh, one other thing that I did want to mention here uh, is that uh, if we come over here, go to email, uh, you will want to, of course, uh, set this stuff up. Uh, for your SMTP user. Of course, if you're using uh, G Suite, you can uh, set up app passwords. If you're using just regular Google, I don't know if you can anymore, but uh, but you definitely will wanna set this up so that you can uh, you know, recover passwords and get notifications and things like that, uh, as far as that kind of stuff is concerned. In fact, though, um, email notifications, add new. So that's another thing is the email notifications are behind File Run Enterprise. So again, they've just put some real weird stuff behind enterprise logins, and I kind of wish they hadn't, but uh, do with that information what you'd like. Again, uh, if you're with me and you agree with what I'm saying here as far as they've got some weird stuff locked behind paywalls that shouldn't be and other stuff that kind of could be that isn't, let them know via Twitter. That's probably the best way to get your voice heard. And again, share this video with them if you'd like to do that and help us maybe uh, maybe make a positive change to file run here. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans. And any of those ways will help support support the channel and give you early access to ad free content. Okay guys, so there you go. There's how easy it is to set up and use File Run. Uh, if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really does help me out quite a bit. Of course, there are other ways you can support the channel just by liking and watching. Those are those are perfectly acceptable ways to support the channel as well. But I think with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.